Hello guys. Today we shall be looking at the Schneider frequency inverter ATV seventy one HD twenty two N four Z N four Z and just want to uh, sound a note of warning that this inverter can only be worked on by a highly qualified technician, trained technician, who understand what it is to work on high voltage equipment. ATV 71, HD 22N4Z is a 30 horsepower frequency inverter rated at no 22 kilowatts. So you can see the capacity that is not just a small inverter. It's an inverter that is capable of carrying, you know, driving a very high load. Now, as we proceed, Somebody want to find out why are we uh, opening the inverter up? The reason why we are trying to disassemble it is for us to be able to troubleshoot and find out exactly what is wrong with the inverter. This inverter, when powered, will display SCF2. SCF2. That is the fourth code that is displayed on the screen. And sometimes when you power it and you know, uh, give it a command, it will tell you NLF, I mean, no, NLP, NLP. That's to tell you that you know, there's a phase failure or power failure on the control board. So we want to really find out why this inverter is behaving this way. However, let us know, know that inverter is an electrical equipment, electrical device that is capable of driving either your motor or your pump. So that is how, what it is designed for. And another thing is, you no, know, these days, in modern days, contactors are being eliminated through frequency inverters. In the days of old, you have motors that have two or triple coils, you no know, low speed coil, medium speed coil, and no high speed coil but these days you don't really need all that because frequency inverter has taken place has taken over i mean and it's really you no know, uh on the increase in industrial processes so but as you can see on this inverter we are trying to open it up one after the other and what is the essence of opening up? Is for us to be able to troubleshoot the electronics component inside the inverter in order for us to be able to ascertain exactly where the problem lies. So that is the essence of you know, opening the inverter. Well, as we proceed, you will see how it is done. We are opening it one after the other. And as you open it up, once you are through, you have to follow it the reverse direction to reassemble it before it can be reinstalled. The fourth is, as I said earlier, is S. CF2, 
that is telling you that there's an insulation problem or short circuit on the part of the output part of the inverter. Short circuit at the output part of the inverter. The motor that this inverter drives has been tested, you no know, checked for insulation breakdown, and found out that the motor is very okay. There is no insulation breakdown, there is no fault on the part of the motor. The cable has been you no know, checked also for insulation breakdown. There is no problem on the cable side. So we have to really you know, sit down and find out exactly where the problem lies. And that is why we are opening it up. In continuation, never work on any drive when the drive is powered. You have to be very, very careful. After switching off the input, always wait at least, as I said earlier, 15 minutes to enable the intermediate circuit capacitors. Discharge before you start working on the drive. And in some cases, you no, know, you have to allow even the heat sink. There are cases where the 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 fan may even fail, and the heat heat sink may be terribly hot. If you don't allow it to cool down before you start working on it, that person may receive a serious bond. And that is why we always advise that you no, know, you should always allow it to 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 stay for at least minimum 15 minutes or above before you start working on it. And again, you no, know, don't forget to also test the the output side of the inverter. Always make sure you test the output part of the inverter, even after waiting for 15 minutes before you begin to you know, disassemble. Because it is extremely necessary that if uh, paraventure the, the discharge resistor internally failed, then the tendency for the capacitor to retain its charges, and which is extremely dangerous. These capacit capacitors are rated you no, know, you no, know, very high. Some of them are from 2,500 UF upward, and which is which can hold the very dangerous charges. So never forget to test, and also it is also necessary for you to test you no know, the DC bus output to the PO, PA plus, PB, and PC2. Always make sure you test all this DC bus line to make sure that it is completely dead before you begin any form of you no know, uh, repair or troubleshooting. And also make sure that you put on all the necessary PPM, you know, personal protective equipment, you know, your hand gloves, suitable hand gloves that is capable of withstanding the rated voltage of the discharge capacitors and even the voltage that enters into the inverter. So all these things are the things that are very, very necessary in the course of working on a, a frequency inverter. Never forget that frequency inverter is you know, very, very common in this present generation. Very, very common in the sense that, you know, as I said earlier, it's replacing all you know, the so-called capacitors and relays. No, in the era when you have gigantic, uh, you no know, cycle system where contactors and relays are interconnected, but in this case, you no know, inverter frequency inverter has taken over. 
and has made the system you no know, automation and what have you very very simple and uh, precise we are working on this if you have any issue on your frequency inverter you can write us and let us know through our youtube channel never forget to uh, subscribe press the notification bo button and also you know, share this uh, video it is very very important thank you i appreciate you so much if you have any question as i said you can you know, write it on our comment line and we'll try as much as possible to answer it if it's something that is beyond us we'll try and contact shenaida to see if they can give us a stable answer for you so this uh, frequency inverter we eventually troubleshooted and found out that the the feeder board feeder board is the one having that problem the capacitor that is integrated on the feeder board and the resistors you no know, either one or two of them have failed and instead of you no know, buying and replacing the capacitors and the resistor you know, it's better for you to order for a new feeder board order for new feeder board and as soon as you get it you replace it there are cases where you have this issue of this fault of SCF2 that is not feeder board related, but rather it is more related to uh, either the rectifying board, I mean the rectifying system, or the IGBT. Whichever case it might be, just endeavor to make sure that you troubleshoot and be sure of you know, the exact component that has failed and you replace there are cases where you no know, the 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 rectifier and the igbt may not be faulty but some of the internal components like the resistors the tvs you no know, diodes you no know, the you no know, other type of diode that are there protection diode you no know, the capacitors no and so on and so forth may fail and if that's the case you, know, you just replace and get it running now as you can see we are done the troubleshooting which is not covered here but nevertheless we intend to you know let you know that it is something that we cannot actually cover here because of the time so that troubleshooting part of you know, the video has been, you know, uh, was not covered here. But what we just let, what we just want to let you know is that the troubleshooting was done, and we discovered that the filter was a culprit, which we had to remove and replace. And now we are coupling it up, reassembling it to get it running. So that is what we have just done. Uh, don't forget you know, to keep on watching and helping us to, to share the video. Thank you. I appreciate. God bless you all.